Hi, folks. This is part R of a well um, decomposed uh, introduction to cloud computing and big data or data engineering. And I'm your instructor, Jeffrey Fox. And this particular section is a sort of off in left field section on jobs. And uh, the jobs we discuss are in computer engineering, clouds, data science or data engineering and a peculiar comment on design. All right, well here's some um, data whose main implication is that China is beating us all up. Uh, here we have the number of degrees from the National Science Foundation in the US. And we have here bachelors, and here we have PhDs. And lo and behold, here's China soaring to infinity. And here we have European Union, first top eight countries, and here we have USA, and here we have Japan. Notice all are increasing except for Japan. Similar decrease in Japan for the um, PhD. I think I assume that's the just the birth rate in Japan declining. And um, for PhD, it sort of slightly surprises me because China is very strong in research. But their number of PhDs is not soaring like the number of um, bachelor's degrees. So that's actually a striking piece of data. And in fact, China is below the European Union, which is here. Pretty, uh, some, that's not dramatic data, but at least it's interesting. And here we have some, a slide which is meant to address the fact that everything is all over. Uh, robots will replace us, there will be no jobs left. And I still remember in 1990, um, Japan was going to take all our manufacturing jobs. So there are all these scare stories. And uh, what this uh, amusing um, slide does, but points out that this particular robot scare has been going on since 1920, when the machines were taking over jobs. And automation was taking over jobs. Hear more about machines in 1960. 1980, robots. And here we have 2018, robots. So, is that going to happen? Well, I'm not certain anybody knows, but there are some useful slides in the following week will say that's not, it's not so obvious what's going on. Here we have from 1950 to 2015, and the number of locomotive train jobs. That's declining due to something or other. Well, it's partly due to aircraft. The number of aircraft jobs actually grows inversely to, to automobile or train jobs. So actually the total is about constant. So this just points out that um, jobs are changing which means certain types of jobs are disappearing. But other jobs are appearing, so you have to look. You can't do a tribute analysis. You have to look at it uh, both from what's being added as well as what's being subtracted. If you find, of course, what's being subtracted does tell you that certain fields are becoming uh, less important. And in fact, you know, like at universities, it's no longer quite as obvious that um, um, a liberal arts education is as valuable as it used to be, and you really might need to know some more quantitative skills to, to succeed in the market today. The next slide is similar, but it's agriculture versus services. So here we have agricultural jobs going down, but service jobs are soaring. And actually, they soared more than the agricultural jobs have declined. They have services from 1900 to 1930 went up, whatever it did, 14 million of our agriculture declined by 4 million. All right, so that's, <coughs> we see this trend is universal. All right, here's another way of looking at here. We have unemployment rate on this side. Uh, gross domestic product in trillions of dollars here. And of course, the GDP is soaring. Um, Whereas the um, unemployment rate 
is uh, actually roughly constant. There's some blips, the giant, you know, here was the giant catastrophe in the early 30s with the stock market crash and dust balls and things like that. When the unemployment went up, it was over 20%, 25%. But it's been 5.8% 70 year average since, uh, since after the Second World War. And of course, the GDP has just gone marching forward, except for this little glitch in 2008, which people remember. Um, some sort of um, correction. And people, if you look at this, you will see that. Well, there's actually a pretty strong uniform rise here, um, but it's uh, this, there are glitches every now and then, and quite common to have downturns. The 2008 downturn actually is quite big on the GDP scale compared to other downturns. So this says that despite of all these drastic changes and these revolutions in which we're discussing, some things don't change that much. Okay, the next set of slides discusses some details of, uh, of uh, employment. All right, <clears throat> here is the design um, comment which I got from uh, the annual um, Internet Trends uh, thing from Kleiner Perkins. And um, it's get longer and longer, and that's why I used to get lots of decent uh, slides from, but they've now moved on to um, not give so many uh, good basic slides. But they still have lots of information. They just this, their, their analyses have moved on to detail, and this points out that the ratio of designers to developers is increasing. One to twenty-five becomes one to nine with Atalasian. Um, <coughs> Here we have um, IBM 1 to 72 to 1 to 8 to 1 to 3, and LinkedIn 1 to 11 to 1 to 8. So that just says the importance of design is, uh, is increasing. Which is not too surprising. It's still dominated by developers, it's just that designers have got more opportunities. So Indeed.com used to produce trends, they've now abolished them. Uh, so I actually, this only goes up to the middle of 2017 when they stopped doing this. Um, and um, it's sort of interesting, these are job postings. Now this is a little, you have to be a little careful here. If it's in quotes, like for data scientists, you're looking for data scientists. For computer engineering, you're looking for computer or engineering. Cloud, you're looking for just cloud. And so you can see some interesting numbers. Data science is 0.14%. Cloud is 1.3% of their postings, which is pretty high for a particular technology. And <coughs> computer engineering is 3.7%. So that says computer engineering and cloud computing are strong fields to be in. And um, here's a slightly amusing flip side of this, namely this is what the people say they want to do. And you will find that the Whereas it's exactly it's um, exactly reversed. Used to be computer engineering was significantly bigger than cloud, which was significantly bigger than data science. The opposite is true here. The job seekers are mainly it, uh, have the largest fraction in data science or data scientist. Computer engineering is pretty small, and cloud is not so big. For, uh, 0.05%. Remember, the actual cloud job seeking was over 1%. So that's a big, there's a really interesting mismatch between job seeker and job posting. And here is the last slide of this set. I, mean, I have actually other graphs, but I don't show them here. And um, this is looking at big data jobs, and in particular, at the type of jobs, which are either of two types, sort of Generic uh, data scientists, uh, where there's a huge demand from 1.5 million man managers and analysts with the know-how to use big data to make decisions. And then there is the um, deep talent, where they, exp they expect to need by 2018, namely today, around half a million, 450,000 to half a million uh, uh, people. 
They expect 300,000 to be available and the gap to be 1.5, um, so um, 150K to 200K. And so that's a non trivial gap. And it motivates the need for both types of people, the manager types and the um, analytic, the um, the people with deep analytical talent, able to build cloud systems to support the analysis of big data in lots of companies. So, thank you. That's the end of this short section on jobs. Okay, folks, and now I've got a different issue here. Um, this is an amusing picture. This is sort of the structure of a system, machine learning system, with different components and extracting features, so the infrastructure, monitoring of tools and things. And here we have buried in the middle is a tiny part of the code called machine learning, because that's just a little algorithm right in the middle. And around this, you have all sorts of stuff to collect the data, verify the data. That's all data engineering. And also here's systems, computer software systems. You know, I guess as well. So this is sort of applied machine learning. So this just says that um, you need to be a little careful when you do data science. And you don't just want to look at the machine learning. It's a tiny part of data science, of, of a real system. Whether that's data science or data science and all of this, is that's a matter of definition. I think people are a little confused about, about uh, what is data science, which what does it actually cover, and what the jobs are. I think that's an important area we need to do more work in. There is a nice, you can look up the original NIPS 2015 paper here. And I had a follow up to that because I then asked Gartner, um, what is, and how do we understand different types of people and what you want to, what you need in a team? So here is a team devoted to something in the data science area, and then it's doing something to do with AI and applications with machine learning. And here is the composition of this team. So we have data scientists, 10%. And look at their capabilities. So they're pretty broad. Data science is actually a pretty challenging field because you need to know some IT skills, some quantitative skills about applying machine learning and knowing what to do, and then some understanding of the domain. And then you have data, but then this will be contrast with data engineering who don't know anything about machine learning. They have more IT skills and little knowledge of the domain because they're doing general issues of data. Then of course we have, you know, this is a bit unfair on data scientists. They need to know as much about the domain as the business experts. And business experts know I, know I, know I, don't know any IT or any quantitative skills. Notice that perhaps because this is a rare talent to know to have all these three things, data scientists are only 10% of the team. That's because all the hard work is done by the 30% of data engineers, the 15% of software engineers, and the 20% of business experts. Then there are more informal data scientists called citizen data scientists here, which have somewhat less domain understanding, significantly less IT skills, and less quantity. They're just sort of um, junior data scientists. Um, and then we have the great people, the quants. The geeks, the really tremendous experts on um, quantitative skills with uh, gains. Good, but not superstar IT skills and some domain understanding. And then you have unicorns, which basically um, are super at almost everything. And according to this, they're not quite as good at quant geeks at analyzing things, but they have far better deep understanding of the domain, and they have pretty reasonable IT skills. Uh, unicorns are the key people. If you're a unicorn, you can write your own contract and get arbitrary funding. Um, so there's roughly, no, there's hardly any unicorns in the world. Um, so, and of course, this, this is, although we have categories here, it's all a continuum. 
And just by, I just wanted to point out that when you build a team, um, the amount of uh, machine learning expertise is not necessarily critical in all members of the team because it's a giant system. And sometimes things like cleaning up the data, which doesn't really require deep machine learning, is the dominant thing to do. So that's the, all. Of, that's the last comment I have on data engineering. It's actually a pretty important area which uh, more people should study. Thank you very much.